welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast on knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Welcome to this new episode and a special welcome and thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting the channel on my Patreon page. Um, I am quite overwhelmed by all of the people who have joined recently and it is so so lovely to have them all as my patrons and thank you all so much. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and also on my blog newleafdesigns.nl and I will list all of the other things right here. And remember there's also a Ravelry group and we have a really fun, well two actually, we have one crochet along going on for my rainbow blanket and one, well, <laughs> it's a folk along so it's not really a knit or a crochet along. Um, here I have it. So um, it's a folk along for the yarn folk bookazine by Escapius, which was published a few weeks ago, I think maybe one month ago now. And um, there are beautiful knit and crochet patterns in here. And if you are making any of those patterns, you can join in with the folk along, um, hashtag Escapius folk along and hashtag yarn bookazine. And you can find all of the details on my Ravelry page um, in the um, No Leaf podcast group. Um, yeah, so really exciting stuff and I feel like a lot is going on at the same time right now. Um, which of course, it's kind of true. Um, the winter months, well is it, is it already winter? Probably not. Uh, but the autumn and winter months are especially uh, busy for crochet and knitwear designers because it's the season and um, <laughs> for me, uh, it seems to be the season of gift knitting because I have knit a couple of things to gift away. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna start with those. Uh, oh, and for those of you who are wondering, yes, this is a badger pin. I am a proud Hufflepuff. And this is for all of you badger babes out there. <laughs> and I decided to go with a little gold um, shawl as well. This is the Spindrift Shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade and I've done some modifications as well. Um, yeah, have a puff. <laughs> anyway, I have two knit finish objects and some other finished objects that are not knitting or crochet. <laughs> so the first one is this pair of socks and I still have my stitch marker on there from where I last hooded. I think it wasn't there when I podcasted last since I tended to move it every day. It's a little teapot. Super cute. Um, yeah, so I took these socks with me to work every day and uh, I knit on it during lunch break, but I would get like um, one repeat of the pattern done each time and uh, in the weekend I just sat down and uh, finished the whole thing. Uh, I still have to weave in the ends and block it though. But I think they're so cute. Um, I love the colors and I love this little purple detail as well. So this purple yarn isn't actually sock yarn but you know since it's just the cuff um, I mean it doesn't really have to contain nylon. Um, yeah so the um, blue yarn that I have used is Long Yarn Yabol in the cobalt blue uh, color and um, the minty green one that um, is Scapies Invicta Extra. And I don't know the colorway number because it has just has a number but there's only one minty green one so you can't really go wrong there. And then this is some yarn I picked up in China years ago. 
I, I, I remember it's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. Yeah, but you know, it's fine for cuffs. And the pattern is my Madly in Love socks pattern, which is free for my Willow and Elder patrons, including a full tutorial video on this, but it's also available in my Ravelry store if you want to have a look. So um, the pattern is for shorty socks. So like, like this ankle socks, super cute. Uh, but I decided that I wanted to gift a long pair since you know, the first pair of Madeleine Love socks I made in a kind of uh, plant blend, plant blend <laughs> yarn. Um, and it's very, it's not very warm, it's very cool. So um, I decided to knit shorty socks. Uh, but these, I do want the recipient to be able to wear them in the winter months. So I used, um, I knit a long cuff. So uh, these are for a work friend of mine, and I won't tell you who it is, just in case she's watching. Um, yeah, but ugh, I just I just like these so much, uh, and they are totally her colors, but they're totally mine color my colors as well. So I kind of want to knit a matching pair for myself. <laughs> But I don't have enough yarn for that, so who knows. Um, she does have the same size as I do, so I, I was very tempted to keep these for myself, but I, I don't I don't want to keep them for myself. So yeah, I'm going to gift them sometime during the next month. So yes, FO number one. And number two is a hat, and you will have seen this last time. Uh, I was uh, knitting on it. I had barely started. I was here, I think. I had just started the honeycomb stitch pattern, and now I have finished it, and it's it's very pretty. And I love this stitch. I want to knit a sweater in this stitch. Um, and so this is the Mithril beanie. Uh, last time I called it the Mithril beanie, uh, but then I was corrected by my lovely boyfriend, um, who is a big fan of Lord of Lord. Oh my God, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and I um, uh, said it's called Mithril. Uh, it's supposed to be this really lightweight armor made by elves, I don't know. Um, and um, the stitch kind of looks like chain mail as well, so I can see, you know, why they would call it after armor. It's, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's cool. Uh, so the Mithril Beanie uh, originally um, has a garter stitch crown, and I decided not to do that. Um, so it's it's not very easy to decrease in this stitch so i think that's why they did it um because the garter stitch is of course easier to decrease but i thought i want to make a slouchy hat and it's it's okay if it's kind of bunched up like this so i did decrease um but i still had a big number of stitches left and then I just cinched it all um, together. So the uh, designer of this Mithril beanie is Katie Fustich. Still don't know how to pronounce her last name. Uh, but yeah, really pretty. And uh, so you fold the brim over and then you put it on. And I think it's super cute. I kind of want one for myself as well. It's been a long while since I've made a hat. Yeah, I think it's really cute. And I've made this for one of my uh, former classmates um, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer and um, she is on her way to recovery. Um, she has finished her um, last chemo and is enjoying a few chemo free weeks now and um yeah but still i wanted to send her a little care package so um 
I'm knitting her this hat. Well, I have knitted her this hat. Um, this one is, is um, I thought it would be nice to wear over uh, her wig um, because it's, it's really light and, you know, it's uh, stretchy. So I hope it will fit over the wig. And then I'm making another one out of a uh, lovely alpaca DK yarn by Chestnut Cabin. Um, and I'm making that um, to go directly on her skin to just, you know, it's, it's super warm. It's hypo, hypo and oh my God, <laughs> hypoallergenic. And um, yeah, just super soft, super warm. So I hope that will uh go well with her skin um because i know it can be very sensitive so i'm uh gonna be putting this hat aside well i'm gonna be blocking it first because i haven't blocked it yet and i think it will be even more slouchy when i've blocked it um and i'm still looking for a, a dk hat pattern i don't know i kind of don't want to do color work I only want to use this yarn because I don't have an, uh, a contrasting yarn that is as soft. Uh, I do have some other alpaca, but it's um, it's not the same weight. Um, so I, I thought, okay, I'll just use this this one uh, yarn. So I can't do any color work. Um, I was thinking of doing brioche, but then brioche is kind of um, stretchy and I don't want it to just drop off her head um, so I want it to be nice and warm and dense and um, yeah so I've been looking at some cabled hat patterns um, so I might be knitting one of them um, yes but most of the hat patterns that I've checked out all have eyelets or other kind of lace in it and I don't want that I want it to be a very dense hat very thick um, yes so I'm gonna be uh, browsing some hat patterns so yay I'm really excited to have two knit finished objects this week even though they're both really small but I've been working on these socks for a while and uh it was nice to finish those and you know gift knitting is always more fun i have some other fo's as well uh one is made by me and the other two are made by my boyfriend and we went on a pottery class uh in august and we finally got to pick up the things we made and um, I, I recorded some Instagram stories at the time and I don't know if you have seen them, but I was uh, I was the worst uh, pottery thrower ever. <laughs> oh, you should have seen my heap of um, discarded clay because it was um, it was a lot. Thankfully, they can use the clay again. So I thankfully didn't waste anything, but still mine was the biggest pile uh, but I did manage to make a cup and it has been um, baked <laughs> fired probably it has been fired and uh, glazed and here it is it's so cute oh it's so cute I love it and I love the glaze and I love how imperfect the little ear is um yeah so i've i've made this cup myself on the wheel and then uh i picked some wet clay and i just made this large uh like almost like a strand but you know you know what i mean just a little strip of clay and formed it to make the ear so it's so um, it's so interesting because I can still um, I can still feel the way that I formed it in my hands. You know, I can put my hands on this and I just feel the shape of my hands and my fingers, and it's it's so weird. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, it's just, oh, I'm just so, so pleased with this. And um, my name is stamped in the bottom of the little cup and the glaze code and the date. So that's, it's just a really nice souvenir. I mean, I don't know if I'm actually going to use it because um, I don't drink coffee and it's not big enough for tea. But uh, yeah, who knows? <laughs> for now, it's a nice photo prop. So there's that. Um, and then my boyfriend, Tim, who is a total natural at um, pottery, apparently, he made two bowls. And yeah, he was a natural. So, and they are so pretty. Uh, so this one is a green, green, a green glaze uh, on the outside and white on the inside. And you can see the little swirl in the middle that he made with his fingertips. <laughs> see that? And also in the other one, there's this little fingertip swirl. So it's just from, you know, putting your finger down and then the, um, the pottery thing will um, will turn it and you, you will get this kind of spiral. It's just, uh, um, yes, I love those little details and take a look at this glaze, you guys. It kind of reminds me of an old map, like a, yeah, like a world map. So pretty. And then the inside is plum. So he made this one for me and this one for himself. Um, I mean, I'm just so pleased with them. They are... Oh, so beautiful and it makes me want to book 10 more pottery classes because it was so much fun um, even though I was crap uh, it was a lot of fun um, just to I don't know I guess with every new craft that you try you have to be totally submerged in it and totally uh, just you're not thinking about anything else which makes it incredibly um, relaxing and meditative to do and just to see something form in your hands uh, and then after a few weeks be able to hold this amazing piece of pottery it's just you know it's just amazing. So yeah, I kind of want to book a couple more pottery classes, but um, yeah, who knows? I mean, pottery classes are a bit expensive, um, you know, totally worth it. But you know, if I'm going to make stuff that I'm not actually going to use, um, yeah, so it, it'll just be a little fun extra. And I like doing the classes versus buying all of the materials myself because it is quite a lot of materials that you would need. Plus, you know, you need a professional oven and glaze and um, yeah, I, uh, I'm fine with doing classes um, at first. Okay, so I want your opinion on this as well. I mean, your thoughts. So, um, I remember last year there was a big, um, well, not discussion, but everyone everyone was um, saying if they were a project maker or a process, I mean, no, product or process. Um, and I was always on the fence about what I was. Um, so um, if you're a product maker, um, you really want the thing you are making and can't wait for it to be finished and um, you're not 
into the process as much but you really want this product and uh, you're really motivated to get there and if you're a process maker you're not really you don't really um, wait it's not that you don't care about it but it doesn't really matter what you make as long as you make um, I mean, the process is just satisfying and if you end up not using what you make then it's fine um, and I've always been on the fence about that but um, it's funny how doing a different craft kind of makes you think about your other crafts so doing this pottery um, has made me think that I'm a process maker because you know as I've said I don't know if I'm gonna use this cup or these bowls they're you know we have bowls and they're not gonna be big enough for soup or yogurt I mean maybe to put like peanuts in or something and put it on the table or, or like dipping sauce but this cup I mean I don't know if I'm gonna use it. So uh, this pottery was definitely a process, process make for me. Um, but I think I'm that way with knitting as well because I tend to not use the things that I make, which, uh, you know, I wish that I would make stuff that would go with my wardrobe uh, better. And I'm getting the hang of it. I'm I'm really wearing my shawls now, and um, I'm I'm getting better at um, knowing what will go well with my wardrobe and knowing what I will wear and what I won't wear. Um, yeah, but I think I'm still a process maker. I just I just want to knit or a crochet. I just I don't want to sit and do nothing. <laughs> So that was a lot of fun, but back to the knitting and crochet now. Um, but if you're thinking about doing a pottery course, really do it because it's just so much fun. It's really so much fun. Um, so I have, uh, I'm not sure, no, I have started this one since last time. The second whip I had already started. Um, during my last podcast. So uh, I decided to join in the festive sock along by Amy from Stranded Dye Works. And um, also because, you know, I wanted to start a new vanilla sock and then I thought, okay, why not choose a Christmassy yarn? And I happen to only have one Christmassy yarn in my stash. Uh, and of course you can only, uh, you can also choose a Mm, festive sock pattern for example trees or um, a snowflake pattern but you know then it wouldn't be vanilla anymore so uh, I just wanted a nice simple vanilla sock and I chose this yarn by Nicole C. Mendez uh, who um, I also showed you some other Nicole C. Mendez yarn in my last podcast uh, but I decided to use the one that I got from her last year and this is also the yarn that Amy has already um, knit up a, a Christmas pair of socks in so I thought it would be perfect for her knit along so this is the little red riding hood colorway um, but yeah it kind of looks like Scandinavian Christmas as well it has red and green and pink, white, and blue. So I think it's super cute. And I have a cute stitch marker to match. Yee, little Dutch candy in there. My friend Fiona told me what these were called in English, but now I can't remember. So they're kind of like marshmallows. I can't remember now. Was it like war warbler? Uh, I I don't know. So really cute, and uh, so I started these last 
Saturday. Uh, it's Thursday now. So I started these a couple of days ago when we went to the cinema. We went to see uh, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, by the way, I was so disappointed by that movie. I mean, I love everything Harry Potter, but I just hoped there would be so much more in the movie. Yeah, and I think Johnny Depp is a really bad casting for Grindelwald. Yeah, I love Jude Law though. <laughs> yeah, he was a good Dumbledore. He was like very classy and yeah, he was a good Dumbledore. So we went to the cinema and, and oh my god, those baby nifflers. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I've, all, I've already seen cuddly toys, like baby niffler cuddly toys, and I want them so badly. <sighs> yes. <laughs> so I knit the toe when I was at home, so I could knit in the cinema. I have only ever taken one or two socks to the cinema. And so this was my first time, uh, third time knitting in the cinema. Um... And it's still a huge challenge for me as I haven't really mastered the knitting blind. Um, yeah, so there were some wonky stitches, but I recorded a video for my patrons uh, as to how to fix those uh, wonky stitches or, you know, mistakes you might make in the dark. And also some tips and tricks on blind knitting. So knitting without looking at your work which can be super helpful if you, um, you know, if you get together with your non-knitting friends and they don't really think you're paying attention to them. So you can just look them in the eye while you're knitting and they will see, okay, this knitting is not a big deal. So, and they will let you knit more often. So yeah, win-win, right? So, um, and it's really handy in, um, when you're um, riding a car, well, not driving, but when you're a passenger in a car or in a vehicle and you usually get kind of nauseous, then it's really handy to be able to knit blind. And I still haven't mastered it perfectly, as I said, but um, I'm working on it and, you know, practice, practice, practice. So, ooh, I looked again. So, I uh, recorded this little video for my patrons. Oh, mistake. Mm. Um, just, you know, I thought it was a fun thing to record. And uh, I posted about it on Instagram and a lot of people seem to be excited about it. So, yes, that will be uploaded very shortly. Um, yeah, so... Those are my Christmas socks. Uh, I think the uh, festive sock along only runs until uh, November 30th, so I have to get my knit on. But yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, vanilla socks are super fast, so, uh, and I'm taking them uh, to work to uh, knit on in my lunch breaks as well. So I get a little bit done every day. And uh, for now, they are, I'm keeping them in my Mama Flea bag, which is one of my favorite project bags. I love this print. Um, yeah, just blue and green are totally my colors right now. And I love flowers and leaves. So yeah, they go in there. I used to have DPN cozies, I mean needle cozies. But I seem to have lost them <laughs> or misplaced them, so yeah. Okay, and now for the project that I'm most excited about. Um, I'm crocheting a cardigan. And last time I showed you the sleeve cuffs. Try not to show you that much already. So yeah, these leafy sleeve cuffs. Um, and 
I am making a cardigan from the yarn Bookazine by Scapius, and it's the Olga cardigan. There it is. So it's a really nice filet crochet cardigan with lovely uh, borders and motifs. Yeah, really pretty. So, um, and I was really surprised by the construction as you start at the sleeve cuffs and then work inwards. So that's really fun. Uh, so I've completed one sleeve and a panel of the body. This is uh, just a side panel of the body. There will be more. Um, yes, I'm super excited. So let me just show you how that fits. The it doesn't matter whether it's a right or left sleeve, so they are identical, um, identical to make. Um, yeah, so I'm really, yeah, I love how it's looking so far. Uh, I did make a little mistake. Um, I have too many blocks so if you can see there are fiddly crochet blocks and i have too many so um and the designer susan welsh was kind enough to point that out for me um but uh yeah i'm gonna count exactly how many um blocks i have um too much <laughs> uh I'm just gonna count how many I have and then see if the pattern is still, mm, you know, it needs to be dividable by a certain number. I'm gonna check if that's still the case or otherwise I may have to rip back because, yeah, I made it too long and um, I'm already using a thicker yarn so it will already be a little bit longer and as the original cardigan is cropped and I really like that style, I, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to rip back so yeah but the filet crochet part was like two days work so and not two full days so it was really not that much work and I am uh, already working on the second sleeve and I'm still on my first ball of Escapius Whirlette although it's really it's just a tiny sausage now and um, yeah, so one ball is 100 grams, and I've already crocheted, yeah, most of the sleeves. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really pleased how this is looking so far. And yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to redo this part, but um, it's for the best because um i don't want it to be too long so see i'm really thinking about my projects now and um i think this one will be easier to combine with other stuff if it's cropped so i'm really willing to rip back and really make the make the effort to um make it the correct length so yeah trying to be better at this <laughs> and again I'm making this for the Escapist Folk Along which is hosted in my Ravelry group so if you are making anything at all from this yarn bookazine which is almost sold out all over the place so um, yeah if you haven't got one yet be sure to check your favorite yarn store and see if they still have a copy um, online. They're available at Wool Warehouse, Black Sheep Wools. It has just sold out at Naughty House in Canada, but I'm sure more is on the way. And um, uh, in the Benelux, we have Cowers Atelier um, and Haberdash as well, um, and Dara Moores. 
So just have a look at my blog post. I have two blog posts on Yarn Folk uh, with all of the links to online escapees retailers with a direct link to the Yarn Magazine page. So if you haven't got one yet, there um, are some other, there are some more in stock. So um, yeah, and if you do make one, be sure to uh, enter it in the folk along um, or just you know come and chat with us um, my mom is making the Farah scarf um, which is this one really pretty and um, I've seen a lot of people making the sleeping reindeer which is so so cute and it's so nice to see all of those projects popping up and I've seen a couple of people knitting the winterberry socks as well. Um, and um, Alia from the Little Bee is also crocheting the old Olga cardigan. So yeah, it's just super nice. Oh, and Narissa is making the um, the fairy houses. Where are they? Yeah, these fairy houses. So cute and I think these would look great in any color so you can um, you can make them fit your um, color scheme of your living room you know it doesn't have to be for a kid's room um, although that would be super cute as well and this is one of my favorites I love color work sweaters and this is just so different from any color work sweater pattern out there. Um, yeah, it's a great layering piece. And you can even make, make longer sleeves, maybe. Um, yeah, that's by Tammy from Canada. Hi, Tammy. And oh, yeah, and I've seen a couple of people making the Frida shawl as well by Nerissa from Miss Nerissa. It's a really nice and quick project and you can do it with or without the embroidery or do tassels or you know uh, but the shawl is just really really nice staple piece and I've seen uh, some people making the Christmas cuddles as well the little pillows well little they're not little <laughs> huge uh, the Christmas cuddle pillows yeah by Kirsten from Hackmarag. So yes, if you're making anything from the Yarn Bookazine, be sure to share your pictures and just chat along with us in the Ravelry group. It would be so lovely to have you there as well. Um, as you know, I mean, everyone's just starting out with their projects and maybe hesitant to share their pictures because they don't have a lot yet, but really just share away. And if you have a question, well, just, you know, who knows, I might know the answer or otherwise I can ask uh, any of the designers. So yeah, just hop along. Um, I'm talking about designers from the folk bookazine. Um, I bet you guys know Rachel Carmona from Cypress Textiles. She is the blanket queen and um, she, ha she has a lovely blanket pattern in here which is called the Happy Fold Blanket. Uh, Rachel will be making uh, a new version of her blanket and will be joining along in the folk along as well. But, amazing news, Rachel has published a book. It's called The Art of Crochet Blankets. Almost poked myself in the eye with it. <laughs> uh, the Art of Crochet Blankets, it's amazing. It has 18 crochet blanket patterns in there and they are inspired by six modern makers. Um, I've done an Instagram uh, video on this as well and I will uh, take you through the book but um, just to give you an example she has taken uh, an art piece of an artist she loves and then has turned that into a blanket which is amazing um, so this uh, this art is a flower marked by Tula pink and this is Rachel's city sunrise blanket which is amazing oh 
and so there are 18 blanket patterns in here and uh, most of them have well all of them have written a uh, pattern most of them have a crochet chart as well and also a color chart which is really valuable it just helps you visualize the blanket and um, you know Rachel's blanket uh, blankets are not straightforward which is amazing because I always I'm always super surprised by her blankets and it's just so different from anything else that I have seen uh, but uh, having said that it is you know uh, extra um, nice of her to put this color chart in in there because she uses so many new techniques and new um you know just new ways of putting motives together um and it's just nice to have this kind of visual um of the blanket so that was the color chart for this amazing blanket the perfect scallops blanket and i've seen her uh make the motives of that blanket on one of her, of her Instagram lives last year. I remember uh, seeing her make the um, motives and I was thinking uh, because, uh, you know, I, I, I know a crochet hexagon, for example, but these were, you know, they're not full hexagons. So they're pointy in one end and then round in the other end. And I was, I remember thinking like how is she going to put those together and um I didn't see I don't think I saw any of the blanket progress after that and now I just see this amazing blanket and I see how perfectly the pieces all fit together and it's just magic um yeah so as I said Rachel is the blanket Queen. and uh, definitely check out my Instagram TV video if you are interested uh, to see more of this book and be sure to take a look at Rachel's Instagram page which is Cypress Textiles and also her blog because I'm sure she will list some of the retailers there I know it's available on Amazon but there probably uh, are many more retailers for this amazing book and I um, I just got my copy of the Molly Makes today. Um, it came out, I think, a couple of weeks ago, but um, um, my subscription gets delivered at my parents' house. And anyway, so issue number 99. And it has one of the blanket patterns in there. So this is the Boho, Boho Desert um, Blanket by Rachel. So if you wanted to have a little sneak peek of the book, then go ahead and get that Molly Makes Magazine issue 99. As if you could read that, it's a little small print. <laughs> issue 99, because uh, there's already one blanket pattern in there. But of course, I really recommend getting the book, all 18 patterns, uh, because it's stunning. And I believe if you send Rachel a copy of your receipt uh, just a picture uh send it to her email address then you will get two bonus patterns as well or at least that's what i saw on her instagram so be sure to check that out two bonus patterns making it 20 blanket patterns um yeah that's amazing and every one of these as i said they are not traditional blankets I have never seen blankets like these before. They are amazing. Yes, go ahead and check out the Art of Crochet Blankets. And I just realized um, that for my My Thrill Beanie, I had not said which yarns I'm using. So sorry for that. I will have put it in the down bar as well uh, when I was actually talking about it. But so I've used two colors of Scapies R Tribe for this um, hat. And the first one is running up until here. So this is one color, and this is a Misneris colorway. And here I have striped in Simi, which is another color from Scapies Art Tribe. So Simi is a real pastel rainbow. 
and Nerissa's colorway is a kind of a unicorn rainbow. <laughs> so uh, it goes from pink and a minty green and blue and here is some minty green as well, a more pink and purple and blue and purple and you get the idea. It's a unicorn rainbow uh, and I thought these um, colorways go so well together and um, that I just had them fade into each other. Um, yeah, so that's the yarn I used for this beanie. And talking about yarn, um, some of you will know that I have dyed some natural, um, well, that I have dyed some yarn using natural dye stuff in the past, and I have prepared another batch to go up in my Etsy shop soon. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact date because it will take some more time for me to um, photograph each and every skein and get that up in my Etsy shop, but I will announce it on Instagram. So be sure to follow me on Instagram, newleafdesigns.nl, and um, then I will keep you posted on the uh, Etsy shop update. And I have brought a couple skeins to show you. I, you know, I'm not able to uh, dye up a huge batch, so I don't think I even have 20 skeins to put in my shop. So small steps. Um, yeah. So just a couple. And to be honest, I didn't have that much yarn left, so I'm going to have to order some more. Um, the yarn bases I have bought from a mill in the southern part of Germany and um, all yarns are um, totally natural so I have a sock base as well and it does not contain any nylon it has 60% um, wool 20% silk and 20% rami which is a kind of nettle um, so the yarn is all natural uh, fibers and I've um, only used natural dye products to dye them so I think it's really nice uh, but natural dyeing takes a really long time because usually when you dye yarn you have to dye ready in um, a little pot or whatever but with natural dyeing you have to prepare the dye as well and usually in small batches because it can you know, it goes bad over time, and uh, usually that's already a couple of days. Um, and um, uh, it's only as brightest at the beginning. So anyway, it just it takes um, some more time and effort because you can't really plan things, or I have not been able to plan these things yet. So anyway, I've brought some skeins here. To show you and I have a lovely autumnal palette as you can see and yeah these are my absolute favorites so um, this one is on my merino sport base which is 300 meters per hundred grams so it's a sport weight and it's 100 percent non superwash merino this one is dyed on um, with matter I really like this one and these are all on my sock base which is the 60% wool, 20% silk and 20% rami. This one is dyed with red onion skins. This one is dyed with avocado. It's really really light but you know it's a really nice color. Uh, I've called this one soft blush. Um, this one was called olive. And this one, um, I have dyed with matter, um, but I over dyed it. So it was dyed with nettles first, and then I didn't really like the color, so I over dyed it with matter. So it became this really muted red, and it kind of makes me think of rose gold. Uh, so that's what I've called it, rose gold. Really, really pretty, especially together with this one. It's beautiful, and I have two of this only one of this so and this one is ginger and I've um, dyed this with carrot top and it's a uh, light and bright in other areas um, that was due to the Sun fading uh, the color so 
Uh, I know that the carrot top colorway is not light fast um, and it will rub off a little bit on your hands as well. So just take extra care with that. Um, some of the other colors might bleed as well. Um, that's just the way of hand dyed yarn and you can um, minimize the effect um, by not letting your knitting soak. Just, you know, uh, wash it and take it out of the water again. So if you use multiple colors in one uh, project, then it won't bleed into each other. Um, and if the color really bleeds, then you can put a drop of vinegar in the water as well and it will help set the color even more. Yeah, but I'm really happy with these and I will have some other colors as well, um, but I'm not able to show all of them. Um, yeah, so just show you, so you know, it's a really small batch and I've only, I only have one or two skeins of every color. Um, yeah, but I do plan to uh, purchase some more um, yarn and, you know, dye when I have the time. It's, um, it's just a really nice way of spending time, but yeah, oh, I'm just, I'm so proud of these. Look at them. So, I'm so in love with them. And I'm saving up on onion skins because I love this color. Oh my God. I love it. So these will go up in my Etsy shop soon and be sure to keep an eye on my Instagram page because I will announce the shop update on there. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. So yeah, so I am gonna get back to the rest of the day because um, I still have a lot, a lot of things to do today. Um, I want to... Um, take more pictures for Instagram because the lighting is just so terrible um, on my regular work days because, you know, it's I don't have any daylight when I'm at home except on Thursday and in the weekend. So I'm gonna take as many Instagram photos as possible <laughs> and um, just so I can post them throughout the week. And I'm gonna be working on some um, videos. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. Yes, I think I did. Uh, the knitting blind video and I have a crochet essentials video coming up as well. So um, on my Patreon page, I already have a crochet essentials video on crocheting in rows and I've used this lovely chunky yarn for it. Um, so if you don't know how to crochet, it's perfect uh, video to start off with um, for basic stitches that will be the most commonly used stitches in crochet patterns um, and in rows it's really really easy to just you know um, get started and my next video will be on crocheting those same stitches in the round and I have prepared some swatches I can only find this swatch right now but I've used these three colors to prepare them so I will be um, filming that tutorial um, soon I don't think I have time for that today to be honest uh, as I will be editing another video for my patrons and uh, on this video and then I have some other things to do. So yeah, Thursday is always a busy day. I uh, never really get any knitting done on Thursday, which may be surprising. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna get going. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And again, a special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and supporting my designs. And if you'd like to do the same, uh, you know, you can be a supporter for only $2 a month, which is nothing, you know, you're buying me a cup of tea every month. Uh, just take a look at my Patreon page, I will link it down below. Um, thank you so much in advance for your, con your consideration. <laughs> um, 
and I hope to see you again next time. Have a very crafty couple of weeks, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye!